Welcome to the life you're made for with me, Dr. Heather Penny. We're going to be having conversations to talk about us spiraling up versus spiraling down because we all want to be living lives that are about thriving, not just surviving. This is the life you're made for. So let's get going. Hello, friends. It's so good to have you join me here today. Just really excited to be talking to you about something that has impacted my life, influenced the individuals and groups that I've worked with, but it's something personally that I have developed and I want to share it with you because it is, <laughs> it has changed my, my work and really the way I enter into spaces and circles. So I want to offer it to you because I think it will really support you that as you step into the life that you're made for, you're not drifting. It's a way to live with intentionality and to create the spaces around you that go beyond just being safe spaces, but, but being, you know, spaces of grace. And it's this idea of what I call inviting in and shutting down or inviting in and rejecting is probably a better way to say it. And one of the things that I do before I do any retreats is I do this, this exercise. So I want to share it with you because I worked with a small executive retreat. It was about five leaders there and just powerful leaders really trying to run a significant organization and very successful, just doing great things in this world. And so I said, okay, before we jump into our three, four days together here, what is it that you want to invite in? And I have them all just kind of go around and just write down a couple bullet points. And then I ask them what they want to reject. It's so powerful to do this as a group because you help people own their own personal power of what they want to invite in and even just what they want to reject. And it reminds them that if we don't do this and live with intentionality, we're actually drifting into spaces that we don't want to be a part of. And we don't really own the energy we bring into that room or the power that we have to influence that energy. So for this group, this executive retreat I'm thinking of in particular, it was so moving to hear what it is they wanted to invite in. And it was clarity and vision and partnership and collaboration and clear communication and confidence and courage. And it was these powerful things that they were able to say out loud. And I said, okay, what do you want to reject? Well, here's the thing that we do when we want to reject something. We kind of know what it is that we are working on. So I, they are all saying, I want to reject defensiveness. I want to reject confusion anger, frustration, lack of clarity, um, misguided vision, and isolation, I think was another one. But it was so powerful because how do you think that retreat went? <laughs> when everybody showed up and articulated and owned their own power and the energy that they're going to be bringing to this, we had a very intentional retreat and we were very on much on the same page you know, we talk, you hear me talk about mind, body, heart, spirit. Well, this is like a mind and a heart and a spirit exercise to make sure everybody in that room is on the same page of what we want to invite in and what we want to reject. We know there's going to be hard conversations that we might probably need to have. There's going to be some challenging things that we need to address, but knowing that we are all aligned with how we want to do it makes all the difference. So it was a phenomenal retreat. I did this with a, a leadership retreat where it was a much larger group. It was about 20 of us. And I did the same exercise. These people had been working hard and probably, I think, at least three years since they'd had a retreat together. So one of the big things that they, the um, executive leaders really wanted to offer their leadership team was really so fun. And it was so powerful because they showed up at this retreat. And I said, what do you want to invite in? And one of the first words they said was, we want to invite in fun. I'm like, I love it. We need fun in order to do rest and make sure that we grow our clarity. But as we went down the list, it really grew into what we're inviting in. Compassion, care, empathy, vision, connection, uh, clarity for next steps. And these are things that they're looking for as a leadership team. They were able to, to not only articulate, but then be able to say, I want to stand in this, I want to offer this and I want to be a part of this kind of space. When I asked them what they wanted to reject, it was things like boredom, <laughs> frustration, unkindness, lack of empathy, 
um, defensiveness, confusion. Uh, side note, I've noticed defensiveness and confusion shows up a lot with what people are rejecting. What I love about this is, again, we're all owning what it is that maybe we have a tendency to do when things get hard. And we're saying, I don't want to offer that. And instead of offering defensiveness, I want to reach for kindness or empathy or curiosity. So again, what kind of retreat do you think we had? It was amazing. Um, with fun being at the top of the list, I remember just doing some fun activities and some games, and it was just really fun to see them play and laugh together. And then we'd move into a serious discussion time and just see them really bond and connect with one another. It was a powerful retreat. And yes, I showed up and offered the content. And yes, I was able to coach and lead it. But I want to say I invited them into that space to own it with me. So it's a way that I collaborate and share that space and honestly, the responsibility of that space as a leader. I think as leaders, if you're leading a, a, a company or a small group, or if you're leading your home, I don't care what it is you're leading. Most of us are leading something in this world. Recognizing that you want to be intentional about creating that space, but then also inviting people in to own that responsibility with you is a really powerful way to partner with people, but remind them that everybody has free will. and Everybody has the choice of how they want to show up and what they want to invite in and what they want to reject. Um, last example on that, I want to just mention that briefly, I, I did this just, just for fun. I wanted to try this at a keynote. So I there was over, I don't know, like maybe 150 people or so in the room. And so it was a larger group besides just a, a smaller group that I was used to with some of these retreats, but I thought I'm going to try this, this, and everybody was seated at tables with this. And so I had the table host just kind of guide this exercise, but I just said, everybody at your table, I want you to talk about what you want to invite in. And these were um, nonprofit leaders that were standing for things in this world. And I'd heard them share at their tables. And so I said, what have you heard tonight that you, you personally are inviting in, or you're seeing other people invite in? And I'm just going to give you about one minute to answer that question. And I'm going to give you one answer, one about one minute to answer the question of what are you rejecting? And I did this from the stage and it was about two minutes um, exercise, but it was so powerful. As soon as they finished answering and I said, okay, everybody, what are you, what are you inviting in? And people just began to offer out loud in, front, in the room and just kind of yelling out Compassion, hope, kindness, abundance, vision, care, comfort. Now, this was a room that was focused on supporting at-risk children and vulnerable populations. It was so powerful to hear the unity in the room of these are 60 plus nonprofits represented that are saying, we are, we are inviting this in. And I said, what are you all rejecting? And to hear them unified as a group. And even though one person was yelling it out, everybody's nodding and agreeing with it. Yes, we are rejecting hopelessness, despair, anger, isolation, aloneness, uh, loneliness, and scarcity, poverty. It was such a clarifying moment. I mean, it still gives me chills just talking about it because I gave them the opportunity <laughs> to kind of share the stage with me, but I wanted them to see they're the heroes in this room because of what they're choosing to invite in and what they're choosing to reject. And then they got to hear each other say it. And I... It only reminded me again of how much I love this exercise because I'm calling people out to be a part of creating spaces, but to recognize when you say it out loud, you get to realize how many more people, whether it's in that room or in this world that are standing with you and what they're inviting in, we might as well say it out loud. If me as a person, Heather Penny wants to invite in compassion and curiosity and You've heard me talk about my three C's, clarity and confidence and courage. I'm saying this out loud and I'm telling people what I'm inviting in, but 
Equally so, I'm taking the opportunity to reject confusion, chaos, comparison, cynicism. These are some of the um, enemies to clarity, confidence, and courage. And words have so much power. So how we are naming the presence of what we're showing up in this life, in this space, or whatever it is we're leading, whether it's in your professional workspaces or in your personal workspaces, we can still show up with an intentionality and say the words out loud. And the reason I'm I'm emphasizing this and I wanted to do a podcast on this is because I think you don't understand. I don't think we understand as humans, the power that we hold within us 24, seven, 365 days of the year And oftentimes we kind of just live almost as a victim of other people's spaces or circumstances. We don't realize that we can carry our space with us. (laughs) We can carry it with us. We can offer it. We can invite people into it, almost like a, a bubble that we carry around us. And so how we choose to simultaneously invite in while rejecting isn't powerful for just a group moment or a exercise you might be leading with your team or something you're doing with your kids at home, I want to remind you that it's something you get to do all the time. And I think understanding that you have this power empowers you to do it, but empowers other people to do it. I'm, I just keep telling people you have a choice of how you want to show up in this world and how you want to show up in a space. But more importantly, you have a choice of how you create that space. We can do better be, than beyond uh, just creating safe spaces. We can create spaces of grace that are really intentional about what we invite in and what we're rejecting. And what I'm learning, the longer I live with this awareness and I'm watching it play out in my worlds of work, and again, I'm using this in my personal life and professional life, but there's a couple of things that happen if we don't have this intentionality. I'm realizing we drift into something else that we don't want to be offering, particularly if we're tired or low blood sugar or burned out or just we're tired of giving. We're, we're fatigued with whatever it is that we've had to face that day. It creates us in a, a vulnerable space that we are in. And I want to say the more intentional you are about what you're inviting in, the more that helps mitigate some of these vulnerable spaces that allow you to just drift into the strongest person in the room or reacting against something that you don't like. And I think it allows us to stay in the driver's seat, get the results that we want. I know the results that I want going into a leadership retreat. I know the results I want going into a difficult conversation or a very needed conversation. I know the results I want when I get up and do a keynote. So why not say it out loud? For this podcast, what I'm inviting in is truth, wisdom, and empowerment. What I'm rejecting is cynicism, confusion, and disregard. Because as we step into our lives, understanding that we have this power changes everything. (laughs) It changes who you, who you choose to become, but it changes the spaces that you create around you and begin to create this ripple effect around you. People want to be a part of what we're inviting in. People want to be a part of standing against what we're rejecting. There's this relief that we create a very high level of comfort if we are upfront and and transparent about what we're inviting and what we're rejecting. It builds this level of trust with you and with, with the world. So my encouragement is to say it out loud. Tell people what you're inviting in. Tell people what you're rejecting. With your groups, invite them in to join you with this. Just take a few minutes at the beginning of each group before you start that event or that project and and give everybody an opportunity to say what they want to invite in. Watch the energy go up in the room. Watch the unity go up in the room. 
and then simultaneously watch what everybody is going to be on guard for that they don't want to have in the room. None of us want to be defensive. None of us want <laughs> to live in confusion. It just kind of happens. So why don't we get a little bit more assertive of saying, yeah, let's, let's reject this. And then what happens, and I got to see this happen in the leadership retreat, uh, when the confusion came, I saw people reaching for these things that we were inviting in, like curiosity, compassion, empathy, versus defensiveness or anger or frustration. Because we'd already stated it out loud of what it is that we wanted to be about. So it's a very powerful exercise that I encourage you to live in. And then I'm going to wrap up and share with just two more with you that personally, you know, recently I messed up pretty bad with my team. I sent out a voicemail that it was only meant to be to two people, but it ended up to be five. Now, fortunately, I didn't say anything bad because I don't really talk about people in a negative way behind their back, but it was information that didn't feel good to probably have shared when it is unintentional. You know, it's just one of those times when you send out, and I think everyone's got a story on it. Well, I've got my story now. Didn't feel good. I didn't like how I handled it. I didn't like that that's what I did. And so, I could feel the shame spiral starting. As soon as I realized what I did, one of my team members called me and said, hey, had you sent it out to everybody versus just the two people? I started quickly reviewing, what did I say? And I go, well, this could have been awkward for this person to hear. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call them. I didn't wanna call them because I could feel a shame spiral. I immediately moved into, I'm gonna invite in kindness, truth, and reconciliation. I'm also going to invite in humility. I, I messed up and I'm sorry. And if there's anything I need to own or hurt your feelings, let me know now. Cause I, I want to make this right. I rejected unforgiveness, shame, and guilt. You know, I could feel that shame spiral. Honestly, it's that one of those times where you're like, Oh, I just want to go hide in my bedroom under my covers. I'm done adulting for the day. <laughs> This, this, this is too much. I don't even know how to step into this because it was these young spaces coming up in me of you blew it. You're terrible. You know, they'll never forgive you. Just silly stuff that we put ourselves through when we've made a mistake. So that's one example where I just really stepped into inviting and rejecting. And of course, the people were so gracious to me and we worked through some conversations and address some things. And I would say we're stronger for it. And just a gentle reminder that all relationships need some level of conflict. May it be constructive in order to grow intimacy. So each relationship in order to level up, we'll have to encounter some level of conflict. We can't just stay status quo. So that was the other truth I invited in just saying, May this be conflict that grows us closer together, not conflict that divides. So I invited that in and rejected the division of conflict and, and invited an intimacy in the relationship and higher levels of levels of trust. And another more recent example is just this personal, personal, very personal with my daughter. She's 20 years old and she called me to tell me how I had said something to hurt her feelings. And I, she was not wrong. <laughs> I had gotten a little opinionated on something and I had said it out loud and it hurt her feelings. And I kind of knew it did, but I wasn't really sure because she got off the phone pretty quick. And I kind of had that little prick in my spirit of like, I think that wasn't very kind. Well, you know, she called me recently and she talked it through with me and I could feel myself getting nervous and sometimes when we get nervous or uncomfortable is probably a better word. I was getting a little uncomfortable with the conversation because I could feel myself going, well, I had the right to say that. Or what did I do wrong? And I'm not sure if I even understand. And do I need to apologize? You know, <clears throat> these things that we do when we're getting in an uncomfortable space. And I just could, in my inner self, just stopped and I just invited in. <clears throat> I invited in clarity and empathy remorse, humility. Humility is a big one for me, not in a way that you're groveling, but humility to just learn and grow. That kind of humility is what I'm talking about. And 
I just kind of gently invited in. It was almost like this soothing balm for my spirit as I was stepping into an uncomfortable space. Because I don't like conflict. I don't think anybody likes conflict. There's some people who kind of enjoy it, (laughs) but most of us don't. And so I think um, recognizing when conflict is starting to happen, this is a really important space inside yourself to just start doing that inviting and rejecting exercise. And then I rejected uh, confusion, misunderstanding, defensiveness. And even as I'm kind of talking it through with her, I'm starting to maybe invite in a new one. Like, help me get more curious here. Well, just help me understand. Help, don't help me not get distracted about understanding, but just see that she is hurting and, and to offer an apology because I never want to hurt anybody. Even if I don't understand it, that's not the time to figure out the understanding. It's the time just to offer empathy. Understanding will come. So that's a more personal example of just when conflict was starting to happen, both on my team and with my daughter, inviting it in. And I will say with this scenario, well, with my daughter, it ended beautifully. And it ended with me saying, I'm not sure the best way to handle this because I didn't know. Because I've never been a parent of a 20-year-old daughter before. And so I said that. I said, I've never been a mother to a 20 year old daughter. (laughs) So I'm not sure the best way to handle this, but here's my commitment to you. Together, we'll figure this out. And I'll definitely apologize for where I hurt your feelings. And moving forward, we're just going to keep this dialogue open so that you're going to feel super comfortable about it. And it's going to be a win-win. And I think it's that teachableness that allows us when we invite that in it allows us to not have full clarity in the moment but it'll give space for the relationship to figure it out as it goes grows together because we're not supposed to have all the answers at the beginning we're not supposed to have all the answers and all the resolve as much as we want it we can't do that to a relationship so as i'm stepping into this beautiful relationship with an amazing woman who's 20 years old and she's not my little kid anymore. She's this amazing woman who's got her own thoughts, opinions, beliefs, responsibilities. How do I continue to respect that and honor my own? And how do we do this together? Well, truthfully, I don't know, (laughs) but I'm going to lead with curiosity in myself and then curiosity with her. And I asked her, I said, just just join me in the space to figure it out together. And she said, oh, yeah, I'd love to, mom. It's, I'm just relieved that, you know, you can hear me on this. And I'm like, yeah, I can totally hear you on this. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to find that peace. And maybe that's something else I was inviting in at the moment. Just a peace that we got this. So I'm able to offer my commitment to her without having all the answers. And that's, that became then the resolve. And I want what I'm wanting to establish with this relationship with two adult adulting children is they get to trust me. They get to trust me and that I'll own where I need to own. I'll take responsibility for it. They also get to trust me that when I don't know, I'm not going to pretend like I do. And more importantly, because they're adults now, they get to, they get to partner. We get to partner together and figure it out together. That was an important clarity moment for me. And I'm probably even just getting more clarity now talking about it. But these are just some great, oh man, just great examples I could think of to just give you some ideas for how to use this kind of tool for your life of inviting and rejecting and how it can really change your life and the spaces that you create, whether it's a difficult conversation, whether you're leading a group, whether you're stepping into maybe a conversation with your spouse, whether you're, it's a friendship that you needed to have a conversation with, whether you're, you're asking your team to join you in this space we're being more intentional about the spaces that we are creating around us by saying out loud what we're inviting in and what we're rejecting. 
So as I wrap up, I'm inviting in just so much more freedom for you, so much more empowerment for the energy that you hold, so much more connection to your sense of self and your sense of um, presence in this world, connection to your creator, your God, your higher power, connection to your ability to love, to hold hope, to grow joy, to increase clarity, to engage your courage, and to build your confidence. Cheering you on. Thanks for joining us. We had such a great time today. Obviously, we are all stepping into this life that we're made for, but isn't it nice to have a little bit of support along the way? If you want to find out more about the life that you're made for, come find me at heatherpenny.com. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a review that really helps us out and helps spread the word. You get to step into the life that you're made for. Cheering you on.